just from looking online and seeing how these cuts are. Oh, planes and cars ruins everything. Hey guys, welcome back to my backyard for another cook video. We're gonna be doing something similar to what we did in our last video. And uh, if you guys haven't seen that one, uh, we did a 60 day wet age flank steak compared to a fresh one. And wanted to just do a side by side comparison just to see the effects of wet aging uh, and kind of like what it does to a protein. If you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link in the top for you guys to check out. So today's video, like I said, is going to be something similar um, where we're not necessarily doing anything in terms of changing the process. We're not wet aging or dry aging or salt brine anything, something like that. But today what I wanted to do is kind of find other proteins or other muscles and other cuts of meat that are you know, comparable to other cuts that we're familiar with. I'm sure at this point, all of us are looking for alternative kind of cuts to use just because Everything is so freaking expensive now. Anytime we try to buy a brisket or a beef rib, I'm sure you guys are spending way more money than you anticipated. Uh, and it's the same thing with steaks and things like that. So one thing that I always wanna do is try to find alternatives to things that we're used to doing. And so like last time we did flank steak, so I wanted to kind of go and see what other options there are. Luckily, the butcher shop that I go to tends to have different cuts. And you know, sometimes it's not always available, but I always like to check in with them, see what they got. And you know, fortunately for me, I was able to find two steaks that I think I heard about a really, really long time ago, but I almost forgot about. But fortunately for me, the day that I rolled in, they had both of them. Maybe some of you guys have heard of them. One of the steaks is called a Sierra, which is a thin, lean cut of meat, similar to a flank steak, but instead of finding it in the belly portion of our animal, we're finding it in the shoulder on the chuck. The other steak that we're gonna be trying out today is called a Santa Fe steak. Now this one still kind of has that same characteristics of a flank steak and the cereal like we're talking about. And just at least in terms of looks, it's a thin cut of beef that is fairly lean as well. Uh, but this one is found in the top round portion of our animal. So I think it's really cool to be able to find different cuts that are similar to things that we're looking for. But in reality, I mean, there are certain reasons why certain cuts are used more than others. For one, it could be easier to kind of take out from the primal muscles. And just from looking online, it seems like the top round is a little bit easier to kind of take out uh, opposed to the Sierra that's coming from the chuck. And there are a lot of these like really, really small muscles that probably aren't the most tender, aren't the best, uh, which is why we give them fancy names in hopes that people like me will buy them and test them out. But that being said, let's get to cooking. Okay, some quick observations before we start. Uh, well, this one is the uh, Santa Fe, so this is the one from the top round, and this is the Sierra from the chuck portion. Now, uh, something that we can see right away, the color is much, much different. Uh, I'm not sure why. I, I, would, I would assume that they're pretty much the same. Even looking at that right there, you can tell the, this one is the one that I'm kind of worried about being really tough, and this one definitely went through the tenderizer. And, well, this one did too. There's a little bit, there's some holes right there, but not as much. And this one, I think there is a little more fat on this portion right here. I'm going to trim off some of this silver skin that's left over and some of these pockets of fat. And just in terms of the muscle grain itself, this one is very, very just kind of vertical going with the entire piece itself. So we'll be cutting straight across with you nice and easy. And then this one is kind of going an angle right here. So, you know, kind of like a flat of a brisket, we'll probably start from this corner and go this way. Okay, so salt and pepper ready to go. And let's, uh, let's hit the grill. Let's start with the Sierra. Juices are starting to run a little bit right now. I'm a little bit worried about overcooking this thin cut of meat, so I'm gonna pull this sucker. Next up, we got the Santa Fe. This is the one that I'm actually really excited for. For whatever reason, I feel like this steak itself will have a lot more flavor, a lot more texture to it. Uh, and I think because it is a little bit bigger of a cut than the really skinny one that we just cooked, um, I think it just kind of allows it to kind of cook a little bit better than a smaller piece that we just did. When I cook steaks, I like to use similar cues or at least have that same idea like I do when I'm cooking ribs and briskets and things like that. 
you know, every single steak, every single cut is going to be different, but you want to find similar cuts and things that you might have done before to kind of give you a, a couple tells. Uh, we were looking at the pulley on top, looking for the sear on the bottom, but also just how much it shrinks, right? The shrinking is really a good indication of like how much further you have to go once it starts turning into like a really small like hockey puck. Obviously, it's probably gone a little too far. Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah. Other things that you want to keep in mind, similar to how you place a brisket or, or ribs or things like that, you want to find out what the thickest part is. Right here is our thicker part. That's our, our thinner part, even though it had a little more fat on it. So once you start to learn your fire a little bit, what your hot spots and cool spots are, you know, you obviously want to move it to those spots where you feel like it will cook as evenly as possible. I want to move this one right now, but it's a little stuck to the grate, so I'll give it a second. And pushing down the edges also if you start to see it curl up and because you want to get an even sear on it just kind of like you would put like a weight on like burgers or other steaks or other proteins you know use your use your tongs and kind of just hold it down a little bit and once those proteins cook a little bit more uh, it should flatten out as long as it didn't curl up way too fast similar to like a brisket just with the poke test this spot feels really done this one is a little bit behind but i'd rather have it be a little bit under so i'm gonna pull this thing all right, guys, so let's get into these steaks. Again, this is the Sierra from the Chuck portion, and this is the Santa Fe from uh, the top round. Just predictions, I feel like this one is not going to be very good. Even from the touch, it feels really dry. This one is still plenty, plenty juicy, all right, because like, like I said, that, that area right on top right there, that's the thicker portion. This one is pretty thin all the way around. It smelled really good when, we, when it hit the grill, though. And just because it is super thin, this is one of those steaks that you do, it would be best to kind of cut it at an angle. All right, y'all, not gonna lie, I completely overcooked this entire steak right here. It is brown. <laughs> Man, that thing went by really fast. Uh, I did not expect it to cook that fast. So unfortunately, this is probably not a fair, compar a fair comparison to what we're, <laughs> what we're gonna do, but... Um, yeah, let's taste it anyway. It looks dry, but it is pretty dang juicy. It is way better than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Well, I hope I did a better job on this one. I think I did. <laughs> yeah, I did a much better job on this one. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to overcook that other one, but it went so fast. <laughs> yeah, that's what they look like. If you look right here, the the grain and the muscle is a little bit, this one's a little bit tighter. These ones are a little bit bigger. All right. Yeah. This is definitely more flank steak texture like for sure. All right, guys. So I learned a bunch from this cook. For one, I stink at cooking Sierras because it's super thin. So... If you guys do decide to cook that one, make sure your fire is extra, extra hot so you can get that super nice crust on the outside without having to overcook your steak. But yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not great. I, I probably won't be picking that up. Maybe I will just because I feel like I have to redeem myself from that cook. The winner for me for sure was that Santa Fe steak. Uh, and if they're at, at a reasonable price, you know, I think it's a great buy. And also try to find one that's a little bit thicker. Obviously, it's probably kind of one of those cuts that tapers off towards the end like many other uh, cuts do. Um, but yeah, like cook this thing as you would a flank steak. I don't think that you'll be disappointed. I think it honestly, like even the flank steaks that we had the other, uh, the other video, I think this one beats both of them. If you're looking for something different or maybe a grocery store has you know, a mix of both. Do an experiment for yourself and see which one you like better. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Also, if you guys haven't seen previous videos of me cooking with Dave and Ryan for Dave's birthday, we also invited our meat purveyor there. So he provided us with uh, Wagyu picanha, leg of lamb, some beef rib, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if you guys haven't seen that, you can check that out here. And also, if you guys haven't seen my review of Goldie's, the number one rated spot in Texas Monthly, you can check out that video here. Um, but until next time, I'll see you guys later.